even got Lamborghinis here at SEMA 2018. Lamborghini SUVs, everything you can imagine here. Bentleys, giant trucks, small trucks, ATVs jacked up. It is so cool. There's a lot of Polaris Razors here. Come join us for the review. Mr. Trek here. Of course, I'm at SEMA. It's 2018. I'm up for South Hall where all the neat stuff is for trucks and trailers. And I am here with custom automatic conversion. And Casey is the expert. She's going to tell us all about it. Caught my eyes. I got Allison's on everything. Allison's on Power Stroke. Allison's on Pellets. So she has a story, and we're going to find out what makes them special and why you want to do it. Casey, tell me everything. Well, basically, we started doing this in 1987, when, or when in 1986, we bought an F-350 crew cab dually, Ford, had a 460 in it, and 15 months later, on the hot rod circuit, we wore it out. Put a 12 valve Cummins in it, went through three or four transmissions before we realized that the Allison was the only thing that would hold up to it, so we put a 545 in it. Betsy's on the wall over there. She's got 1.3 million miles on her at this point. 2000, I bought a 97 2500 HD Suburban. We dropped a 12 valve in it and a five-speed Allison. Went through all the parameters to make it work. Pain in the neck. Everyone went, wow, this is cool. Could you do one for us? Could you do one for us? So for years and years and years, that's what we did. We did Cummins Motors with Allison transmissions. Cummins Motors are industry. Alice the transmissions were industrial. Put them together, you have, excuse me, the best of all worlds. As we've gotten into this, and we've been doing it a very long time, longer than anyone pretty much in the industry, even though not always commercially, a lot of people came to us on the power strokes and said, can you do it on a power stroke? My son has a 1995 F250 7.3. His was the prototype. Unbelievable difference when you put an Alice in behind it. Same thing, we now do the 6064. We can help you in a Duramax make your Allison run better. We use Allison programming, it's very different. Locks your torque converter after second gear, keeps it locked up all the way up, all the way back down. If you tow anything, the Allison is what you want, and you want it with Allison programming. Um, 25,000 pounds, 30,000 pounds behind your pickup. It doesn't matter if you build the Allison right. You don't even need to touch an Allison until you're over 650 horsepower. It's gonna hold pretty much anything you throw at it, put the right torque converter in. Uh, we've gotten this down to a science. Pretty much everything we do is plug and play. You do reprogram a lot of your motors to tell your truck it came with an, a manual transmission, and then we run the Allison completely standalone just based on your voltage. I don't full throttle. So we've developed an indicator so that you get, you're in drive, you drop your shift lever down, you're in manual, you can manually tap and hold every gear, which when you're towing is awesome. Um, that's basically it. We do everything plug and play. All of our six speeds have tap shift mode, manual mode. You can pretty much use anything you want to tap shift. I have a customer who uses a Chinook helicopter control stick for his tap shift. That's what he did in the, in the uh, military. Um, there's not a transmission on the market. It doesn't matter if it's Ford, Dodge, they can't touch the reliability of an Allison. So, we're all Allison all the time in everything you own. Well, we rebuild the Allison? Yes, we also remanufacture Allisons. We stick to the 1,000, 2,000 primarily. Uh, when we remanufacture an Allison, we use all new electronics. And we use Allison Electronics as opposed to Delco, because we feel they're a better quality. Uh, the only things we use, of course, are the hard parts and the cases, and there's no reason normally to change those. So it's all new electronics, all new solenoids, all new speed sensors, bearings, clutches, steels, etc. Um, and then we have a line of custom-built torque converters, 
that basically will multiply your power in first, second, and reverse by approximately 30%, which is where you want your power when you're telling. You want that power to get you off the line when you're in stator mode before you hit fluid couple, because then you don't really care what your torque converter does. You want it locked so it doesn't go heat in your transmission. And so that's basically how we operate Allison's. So that's cool. Basically what we do is we look at your tire size, your gears, and then we look at where you're going to be at highway cruising speed with Allison to determine what is the best fit for you. Now oftentimes all you need is a five speed Allison, but if you have higher power or you have certain gear ratios, you're better off with a six speed because it's got, it's got uh, more tooth count in the pump produces better volume, more volume through the valve body, that's where you go into manual and you tap to five. And it acts like an automatic one through five, but it will throw you into that six gear, which will then in turn raise your EGTs and bring up your, your turbo uh, heat. So sometimes a five speed's your answer, but sometimes it's really a six speed that you can operate like a five speed. You rebuild the Allison's and you actually you build the adapter plate to the engine from the Allison you build an adapter piece that goes to the transfer case of the Allison. That's the other thing that makes us different. We have a pack, a pack panning transfer case adapter. In the Allison world, the transfer case for the Allison behind either the gas engine or the Duramax actually has a speed sensor built into the transfer case. In standalone applications, you still have to have that speed sensor. So most people, if they're going to try to do this with a competitive product, will actually drill into the cast housing of the tail housing to put that speed sensor in. First of all, it's hokey. Second of all, you take a cast piece that gains its strength from being a cast piece, and you drill holes in it. So what we have done is we've done a patent pending transfer case adapter. It sits behind the Allison, in front of your transfer case, we see a tone ring and an adapter spline, and everything in your four-wheel drive stays exactly the same. So if it's a Dodge, you use your Dodge transfer case. If it's a Ford, you use your Ford transfer case. Um, and, and that way, you're, you have the best of all worlds without, you know, without weakening any part of it. Well, that's cool. So does your programming replace the total hall mode programming for the truck? Yes. There is no, there is no mechanical need for tow haul if your programming is right. A torque converter is going to throw and multiply fluid to get you off the line. Once you hit fluid couple, which happens roughly after second gear, there is no mechanical reason to have a torque converter unlocked unless you want to build heat slippage, but it softens your shift points. So it makes you feel like you're in a Cadillac instead of a truck, but it hurts your transmission. Tow haul is nothing more than temporary torque converter lockup and it raises your shift point. Our programming actually locks your converter after second once you hit fluid couple and doesn't unlock it until you're down at about 15 miles an hour when you want that stator to kick back in again to give you that added oomph off the line. So we have completely eliminated tow haul and if you look at Allison in a medium duty application, even in like a top kit, you won't find tow haul. Well, yeah, I remember when I sold trucks for 10 years and the, uh, the Allison's that you see in buses and one of the bigger trucks, they shifted hard. And I remember when GM done the pickups, women were complaining about how hard it engaged. So they did, I don't think they lowered the line pressure, whatever they did. I know Ford lowered some line pressure, trying to make it a smoother shift. So does your shift smoothly, or can you tell it's like the old Allison's? It doesn't. Hard. It does not bang into gear, but you feel the shifts. It's more like if you can remember, you know, like your first cars when you drove, you know, like an old Ford or an older Chevrolet or whatever. You knew when the truck. You knew when your vehicle shifted. It it didn't throw you. You didn't, you know, feel it. But you knew when it shifted. Yeah. That's how this shifts in the Allison world. It. You know that you're shifting. But it's not a hard shift. Um, it's just a firm shift. If you have a 6.7 Ford, the 6.7, the back of the motor, is SAE3. 
So we can take any of these Allisons, put an SAE3 bell housing on it, like you would find like in a bread truck, and it'll bolt right to the back of your motor, and then we can just do our adapters and everything for your um, four-wheel drive. Yeah, well, that's cool. So it'll be a, a, little, a little cheaper to do it to a yes, Ford. Yes, exactly. Seven, yeah. it, it, saves you the, it saves you the money on the flex plate and the adapter. Now, you know, Cummins has always called their engine medium duty and gave it light for Ford and GM have always called theirs light duty and gave it a life of like 200,000 miles. So, and that's why is that? Yeah, why is that? Okay. Cummins was an industrial motor or a medium duty motor and a heavy duty motor before they ever put it in an auto automotive product. Cummins is all about low end torque. Duramaxes, power strokes, they were all based on automotive style motors, so their torque is built at the top end. It's a totally different type of motor. They're run totally different. So, same thing is true of an Allison. So if you take a Cummins, industrial, Allison, industrial, you're going to run all of those miles, et cetera, that they tell you that you can run in that medium duty world. Yeah, I always thought that was weird that they would not at least call them a medium duty, but I guess you're right in that area. I'm an old farmer, and the six cylinders always seemed like they were easier to build torque. The V8s, it had to, it had to be tough technology to get a V8 to build the torque. And that's down. exactly yeah. because you're a, you're a low. The only diesel motor in this environment that builds that amount of low end torque is a Cummins. And that's why if you put an Allison behind a Cummins and you leave that GM torque converter in it. You'll tear the studs right out of the bottom, like I explained over there, or you'll lose stator because they're not built to handle that low-end torque. Wow. And even the Ison. I thought the Ison was some super transmission, but it's, you don't think of it that way. Well, we take, <laughs> we take as many of the Ison 68s out as we take 68s out, and we're beginning now to have guys that are pulling out the 69s. Wow. Well, that's interesting. That's news. <laughs> we like it. <laughs> it keeps us busy. Yeah, thanks, Casey. You're very welcome. The torque converter. So you can see the difference. And that's your torque converter? That's not. Uh... That is not a GM torque. Okay. Yeah, with the Allison, you're going to lock it the second year. So if you've, looked, if you've seen a GM torque converter, you can tell the differences. When you go into a billet torque converter, it's a solid piece, and your um, bolts go through. If you look at a GM torque converter, this is basically cut back to here, and you have little blocks that come off that your that your uh, bolts and stuff go into. So a billeted bottom is the way you want to go. It's a much stronger torque converter. That's you, your piston, or whatever they call that back plate. Um, that's where your that's where your flex plate goes in. Yeah, and, is this piece called the piston that your torque converter clutches go against this piece? No, it's just called a billeted back. Okay. Yeah, it's just a billeted back. All of your all of your other parts are inside. So you really can't, you know, you really don't see all the mechanics of what's inside a torque converter unless you cut it in half. So these are our transfer case attachments. Okay. This is for a 2000 to 2010 Allison. This is our brand new piece that's in new products this year, and it's for a 2011 to current Allison because in 2011 they went to a magnum transfer case and the tail housing is a completely different shape. So you take our transfer case adapter, bolts to the back of the Allison four-wheel drive, you take a tone ring and you heat it, slides on the input of your transfer case, and then we have a series of coupling shafts. So this is a later model Allison coupling shaft, 33 spline, that is an earlier model coupling shaft, 29 spline. And then we have various various numbers of splines, if you will, and patterns that go into the different transfer cases. So you put all this together with the adapter spline, the tone ring, and then the speed sensor, which would normally be in the transfer case of a General Motors product, now sits in the middle of the transfer case adapter, reads the reluctor ring properly, and all of your four-wheel drive works exactly as it does, and you have the weakened engine. Sure okay, so we have a line that we have just come out with of billet shafts. So when you get over your 
seven, eight, nine hundred horse range, depending upon what you're doing with your vehicles, you want to go to hardened shafts. So we have a input, output, intermediate, C2 hub, uh, we're also, or C3 hub rather, I'm sorry. And then we're also going to come out with the, uh, the sun gear that's already modified so that the customer doesn't have to go find a machine shop to modify the inside of the sun gear. Let's see, so, and then if you come down here, this is basically your flex plate and an adapter. Uh, this particular one happens to be for a common rail. The one for the 1224 uh, motors is very similar. It's just cut out here, but the same basic spacing. So this is where your flex plate comes in that you can't see when you look at the combination. And then your adapter, which is what allows you to hook the GM style Allison up to the back of a non-General Motors product. Now, then you get into the Fords. This is the flex plate for the 7.3. It's a flex plate, a spacer, and a counterbalancer all in one piece because Ford can't balance a motor. And then this is the actual adapter and your starter spacer. You get into the 6.0, 6.4, flex plate, spacer, counterbalancer, and then the adapter for the 6064. Wow, now which one is your oldest truck on the wall here? Right there. There's now. Betsy. That's Betsy. Betsy started it. At the time we did this picture, she had about a million miles. Now she's got about a million two, million two and a half. Wow. The one next to it is my truck. Wow. Three months ago. So you're a Dodge fan. You must be a Cummins girl. Well, we're all Cummins girls. This has a 12 valve in her. Okay. Uh, so my truck started out as this, and now my truck looks like that because we turned her into a long box dually. Yeah, it does look different. Because we tow a 40 foot toy. Wow. But everything you see on this wall is a non Allison vehicle that has been converted to have an Allison behind it. Well, that's awesome. Well, thanks, Casey. You You're very a lot. welcome. You're very welcome. I appreciate the uh, time you've spent with us, and you know, I hope we can help some of the people who read your uh, magazines and, and uh, publications. Cool. Yeah, we're we're YouTube channels, and we do have websites, and I do do horse magazines. So you're doing good. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you.
tons of pickup truck questions, right? Right. Where do we go for the answers? We go to the Truck Nuts book. Because we're truck nuts. <laughs> and we wrote the book, Truck Nuts. We're nuts about truck. The ultimate guy to buy a truck or yep. to look at a truck or judge at a truck. You know, whether it's diesel versus gas, new versus used, what your teenagers should learn about trucks, all that. You do all kinds of cool tests. Yeah, we do a lot of testing. We do the Ike Gauntlet, world's toughest towing test up the mountain and down the mountain. We do MPG testing on the highway, loaded with trailers. Yeah. We do off-road testing. A lot of that data is in this book as well, and it's a one-stop shop for truck information. That's true. We test trucks maximum capacity, up the biggest grades you can do on the interstate. Yep. So we really put them to the test. And, you know, you can get all the facts you can't find anywhere else. We do MPG tests which you can't find on any sticker anywhere. So, you know, all that stuff that you can't find is in the book. And you can find the book at trucknutsbook.com. There are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all the other bookstores as well. So read about your truck nuts. <laughs>